Hello everyone! Happy New Year po! Happy New Year! Okay, let's all stand at sabay-sabay po natin basahin ang salita ng Diyos from Psalms 92 verse 1 to 2. Sabi po doon, It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High. Proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. At sabi naman po sa Tagalog, Ang magpasalamat kay Yahweh ay mabuting bagay. Umawit na lagi purihin ang ngalang kataas-taasan. Pag-ibig niyang wagas ay dapat ihayag kung buhang liwayway. Pagsapit ng gabi, ang katapatan niya'y ihayag din naman. Tunay nga ang pag-ibig at katapatan ng Diyos ay wagas, hindi nagmamaliw, laging sariwa, bawat umaga. Kaya marapat napat na atin siyang purihin sa pagsikat ng araw hanggang sa paglubog nito. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
isipin mo kung uh, gaano kabuti sa iyo ang Diyos sa nagdaang taon at sa kabutihan pa ang gagawin niya sa iyo itong bagong taon. Patuloy po nating purihin ang ating Diyos.
lang itong mga awitin namin upang mapapurihan ka. Kaya gamitin mo itong mga buhay namin, Lord, upang mapaglingkuran ka, sambahin ka. Tinataas namin, Lord, yung Sunday service namin today. Be in our midst, O Lord. Pangalan mo lang ang siyang maitaas sa matamis na pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Magandang umaga po. Um, Pakipis ba naman po ang um, iyong <laughs> Pakipis ba naman po ang um, iyong katabi at maging po tayo at halina sama-sama. Ang Happy New Year! Batiin natin ang sa 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 Happy New Year! Good morning, good morning! God is good! Hello. Good morning, good morning. I will be reading for Sister Faye today because she is not here. Um, let us rise for the reading of the word. Today we will be reading Timothy chapter 4, verses eight, 1 through 8. I solemnly charge you, charge before you God and Jesus Christ. Who is going to judge the living and the dead? And because of his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, will multiply teachers for themselves because they have an itch to hear what they want to hear. They will turn away from hearing the truth and will turn aside to myths. But as for you, exercise self-control in everything. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time for my departure is close. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. There is reserved for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but to all those who have loved his his appearing. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us all here today, and to keep everyone safe, and that we hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
va. Good morning. May nagtanong sa akin kung napapagod daw kayo. It was a very, very busy holiday season, right? So, belated Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year! Look at the person next to you. Tell that person Happy New Year! I'm glad you are here. Amen, amen, amen. All right our best clap offering for this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a new year, new hope, new beginning, new life, and uh, new challenges ahead of us, right? Are you excited for this morning? Amen. Amen. So um, with all those eating and uh, cheating on diet and it will be a time for uh, exercise. Alam nyo ba na during January, it's the peakest month for 24, ano, LA, 24-hour fitness or lahat ng mga gym. Pataas yung membership nila ngayon. Kasi nakokonsensya yung mga tao na sila'y maraming kinain itong uh, week na to. But anyway, uh, speaking of uh, diet, Eh, let me share to you, uh, it reminds me of uh, a story of a uh, heavyweight pastor who had been uh, advised by his doctor to lose 80 pounds or risk a serious consequence on young health. Yes, this might be a true story. <laughs> the good pastor live, uh, the good I'm sorry. Kailangan talaga mag-set. Alright, yun, mas malinaw. 
Okay. The good pastor took his uh, new diet seriously. Even actually changing no, his driving route to the church building to avoid Filipino restaurants. One evening, however, he arrived for a Bible study, as usual, carrying a gigantic, delicious chicharon. No? And uh, sabi niya, nagpalusot po eh. Sabi niya, uh, sabi ng mga, mga life group attendees niya, no? Nirebuke. He was rebuked. No? But the good pastor's smile remained angelic. This is a very special chicharon, sabi ng pastor. You see, I accidentally drove by the Filipino store this morning and there in the window were a bunch of delicious Filipino food and goodies. Well, I felt this was no accident. So I prayed to the Lord. Sabi niya, Lord, if you want me to have one of those delicious chicharon, let me have a parking space directly in front of the restaurant. Well, obviously, that would be close to impossible that, dahil it's a holiday season. And sure enough, on the 20th time around the block, ayun, there was a parking slot available. Sabi niya, yes, God's will talaga to. <laughs> Pero 20th time. Anyway, speaking of pastors, let's look at today the life teachings that we can learn from Pastor Paul and Pastor Timothy. Let's open our, uh, the pages of our Bibles or turn on our electronic Bibles on 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 8. That was uh, read a while ago by Sister Fe Jr. <laughs> All right. It's about fulfilling your ministry. Tell the person next to you, fulfill your ministry. All right. Glad kayo na lang mag-click. Sorry. Ah. In chapter 4, verse 1, it says, I solemnly charge you before God and Christ Jesus, who is going to judge the living and the dead. And because of this, because of his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. In season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but according to their own desires will multiply teachers for themselves because they have an each to hear what they want to hear. They will turn away from hearing the truth and will turn aside to meats. But as for you, exercise self-control in everything. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time for my departure is close. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. There is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who loved his appearing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning. It is cold, Lord God, but we are being warmed by your love, by your embrace, Lord God. Thank you for the opportunity again to worship you in spirit and truth, to hear your word, your wisdom, to apply it into our daily lives, Lord God. May the people, Lord God, who wish for comfort, peace, and love, Find them in you today, in your presence. You are our special guest this morning. You are our only dear Lord, our Savior, our beloved Jesus Christ. We love you in Jesus' name. 
Amen and amen. For this morning, let's talk about uh, something different. No? Uh, let's talk about a relationship between two pastors. You see, there were many kinds of relationships in terms of um, discipleship. There was this relationship uh, with uh, King Saul and uh, King David. No, it was a beautiful relationship actually, but it turns out because King Saul was uh, kind of paranoid kind King David. There was this beautiful relationship with a uh, with uh, King David and uh, his best friend um, Jonathan, the son of King Saul. But there is also this beautiful relationship with Paul and Timothy. And this time, Timothy, uh, Paul is about to end his ministry. He know he, he already knew that uh, the Lord will, uh, you know, will take him away. So he's uh, giving his final uh, advices and. Uh, some concerns to, to Timothy and reminding him to fulfill his ministry. In fact, we said that, that the word of God is active. That the word of God is omega, alpha, and omega. It is very relevant before, today, and tomorrow. So it makes sense that the letter of Paul to Timothy is also a letter of God to us. Amen. Amen. This morning, we will have uh, some, we, we will try to look at what is the message of Paul to Timothy. Number one, Paul reminded Timothy that he is authorized to minister. Same with us, we are authorized to minister. We are to be ever ready. We are to protect our flock. We are purposely called. We are to finish the race. And we are to receive the award. Let's start with, we are authorized to minister. Look at the person next to you. Tell, the per tell that person, we are authorized to minister. Aren't you glad that you are authorized to minister? It says in uh, verse 1 that I charge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus. He's being, uh, he's being given an authority to minister. As the senior pastor, the junior pastor, pastor team is taking from his mentor. You see, a month after I came here in the U.S., I got a duty, duty letter. No? How could that be possible? I just arrived. So, sabi ko, uh, ano kaya ang gagawin ko? Wala pang masyadong internet noon. And uh, what I did is I called up and I told them that I just arrived in the U.S. Bakit ako nagkaroon ng jury duty? Well, speaking of uh, uh, laws and who's to judge or about lawyers or about... Kasi sabi dito... Uh, I solemnly charge you before God, Jesus, no, ang linaw eh, who is going to judge the living and the dead. So what do we know about judging? If we will not learn from the best person there is, the best judge, who will judge us in the end? You see, I met a lot of lawyers in my life. There were corporate lawyers who told me that they will put me into jail because I represent a company that violated labor laws. And there is also another lawyer who told me that I just need to follow his counsel and pay big fees. If not, my appeal in my case will not prosper, sabi niya. I remember he said that, Pastor, I understand you are a man of faith. But I am a man of law. If your appeal will be approved, I will close down my law firm. You see, my appeal was approved. But I didn't ask him to close down. But he passed away months later after we last met. 
We need to understand that lawyers are not the law. They interpret the law. Sometimes when you get into an argument sa traffic, especially sa Philippines, no? people who are in the high society will just tell you na, di mo pa ako kilala? Anak ako ni ganito, lawyer ako, doktor ako, nakapag-aral ako. You see, speaking of lawyers, even though if there will be a legal argument, even though you claim you are a lawyer, but you are not the law, you're not even the judge, right? Everything will be, kasi sometimes satakutin ka, di ba? Ipapatulfo kita, sige. Right? I'll give you a tip. If somebody, if a staff of Tulfo will call you and ask you to respond on something, don't respond. Why? Because they are not the law. They're meant to, you, 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 they, they, these uh, kinds of uh, TV uh, uh, programs will uh, meant to humiliate you because they make money out of that, right? Because these people are not the law. Hire a lawyer to interpret the law and wait for the judgment of the judge. You see, we need to understand that lawyers are interpreters of the law. They argue to receive favor about the ruling, but they don't give the final verdict. The ultimate person is the judge. If you need to please someone, that would be the judge. Sakasya yung magbibigay ng judgment, right? We must all please the judge. We must do as what and how the judge interprets the regulations. Here, Paul is telling us that the one true judge is Jesus. And we are to reason out with him daily, making sure we are of no violation of any of his laws. You see, pastors, priests, we are not judges. We interpret the law of God, but we are not the law of God. If there is somebody to be pleased, do not please your pastors. Please the one true God. The one true God who will judge you in the end. You see, Paul instructed not only in the name of God and of Christ, but in the light of the coming judgment. Christ's return and, and the establishment of his millennial kingdom being given an authorization in significant, especially in representing our God. It is more privilege and an honor than a duty. Yes, sa totoo lang, the person next, no, sitting next to you is authorized to minister. You don't need a certificate for you to minister, but you are being called by God to minister. Number two, we are to be ever ready. Dapat laging handa. Tapikin mo yung katabi mo, sabi mo, dapat lagi kang handa. Eh, sa verse 2, binanggit ni Pablo dito, preach the word. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, preach the word. Not just preach the word, go out of streets, but preach the word using your life. That's the best message. Be ready in season and out of season. Ang ibig sabihin ng be ready in season and out of season. It means that if your pastor will ask you to pray, be ready to pray. Hindi siya, siya ngayon. Hindi, hindi, hindi siya ngayon. Nung miyakulis ka. In season and out of season, correct. Rebuke this word for correction, for rebuking, encouragement with great patience, and teaching. But some people, some teachers are only using this for what? For encouragement. Because they make money out of it. I don't, I, you see, I cannot talk about tithes. I cannot talk about sin. Oh, I'm trying to avoid talking about hell or the book of Revelation. Why? What it, what it concerns you. You see, the Bible is from Genesis to Revelation. Bakit puro sounds lang ang kukwento mo? Bakit puro encouragement lang? You see, Paul reminds us to preach the word. To proclaim not just to preach a sermon, 
Merong five requirements in this verse set forth commands with the crisp forcefulness of a military order. Kumbaga, binigay ni Pablo kay Timothy eksakto kung ano yung dapat niyang gawin in a military order. Sabi niya, una, the first command, sabi niya, him, preach the word. You need to preach the word. No? Preach the word. It is the basis for all others. The command urged all, all of us to declare the gospel. That was the word on which we have to focus on. To preach, no, actually does not imply na kailangan ordained minister ka. Or you need to stand behind a stately pulpit kagaya nito at uh, mag-expound ng scripture. We are being called to a public heralding of the gospel message. Whether in a mass meeting kagaya nito or person person to person or one-on-one discipleship. Sa totoo lang, you are the newspaper of God. Bakit? Kasi bearer of good news. And you know, one thing I hate about people who 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 uh, uh, brings us the the news every six o'clock in the evening, masabi silang OA, right? Saka parang lagi na nanakot. Hindi ko kayo tatantanaan. Sa gabing ito, ganito dapat. Parang nananakot eh. See, being the bearer of the good news, dapat they must find peace sa mata mo. They must find care, compassion sa buhay mo. Bakit? Kasi si Kristo ang iyong binabahagi. Amen? You see, Paul urged us to stand by his message. The reference is probably to all the varied tasks of ministry and not merely to work of preaching. Some of you, pwede kayo mag-preach through ushering. Some of you, financial support. Some of you, food preparation. That is preaching the word. Some of you, counseling, cleaning the courtyard, washing the dishes, and others. You see, preaching the word is not just opening our lips. It is living the word of God. The phrase in season and out of season may point to Timothy and to all of us. We should realize that the occasion is always seasonable for proclaiming the gospel. Others are, you know, taking a relaxing time para mga relax period sa kanila ang uh, Christmas season. But we never stop. In this church, actually, what we did is we used the season to invite 300 kids in Montalban, Rizal and share to them the gospel. Anong puunan? Yung one dollar mo. Right? Nakita nyo kung gaano kalayo narating ng one dollar mo. No? We just simply gather them, fed them, de- uh, explain to them why there is Christmas, the story of the first Christmas, and lead them to accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Binila sila ng regalo mula sa Divisoria. Simple, pero rock. Nakilala nila yung tunay na Kristo. You see, his next three imperatives or requirements may refer respectively to intellect, conscience, and will. Sabi ni Pablo, number three, no? Correct, no? by the use of reason argument. We are to correct error by the use of reason argument. Why do you think that some of the LGBTQ community hates the Christians? Because some of us are like Pharisees and Sadducees. We exclude them in our group meetings. We give them cold shoulders. We don't embrace them. Unlike Jesus, Remember, Jesus dined with the sinners. Sometimes, we compare their sins to our sins. We thought that they are sinning more than us. Hello, pare-parehas lang tayong sinners. Unless we understand forgiving grace, we will always misrepresent Christ. We must hate the sin and love the sinners. 
Amen? He said, that's how Jesus operates. Again, remember, we are no judge. We are vineyard laborers passed to help in the harvest. Let the Lord judge the person. But our, our task, our God, our, our job is to share the gospel. Number four, we are to rebuke a straying conscience whenever the need appeared. To make the, corre to, to make the correction and rebuke profitable, it must be accompanied by sound, reasonable teaching. You see, Christian reproof without the grace of long-suffering has often led to a harsh, censorious attitude intensely harmful to the cause of Christ. To rebuke without instruction is to leave the root cause of error untouched. Ibig sabihin, if you will rebuke a person, rebuke because you love the person. Hindi para iparamdam mo na naiinis ka lang. Ayan, buti nga sa'yo. There you go, good for you, suffer now. Ang tigas kasi ng ulo mo, pinagsabihan na kita. Sabi ko na nga ba, abuti na lang ako, mabait akong krisyano. That's not how you rebuke. You rebuke because you love the person. Not to parang i-compare na mas magaling kang krisyano. And number five, we are to give hope to the faint-hearted by providing tender encouragement in the face of discouraging opposition. Anong ibig sabihin? You see, I used, to be a, I used to be a chief guidance counselor in the Philippines. At the same time, I was the school chaplain and HR director all the same time. Well, maraming salamat sa nagpauso ng multitasking. Ang dami ko tuloy trabaho nun. I conducted counseling to all grade school and high school students as in a private Christian school. In fact, one of my students visited us a month ago dito. I designed programs for chapel service every Wednesdays and students retreat twice a year. Somehow, I find it conflicting with my other job, and that is to police the teachers and staff and always uphold the HR manual. Boy, I tell you, sabi nga ni Pastor Bert, boy, oh boy, 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 oh boy. I tell you, it doesn't mean you are in a Christian school. It means everyone is Christ-like. I worked with the most profitable company in the Philippines, and I had more tough times in a Christian workplace than the business marketplace. So I need to be tough, or at least act like one. In my first year as the HR director, I sincerely uphold the rules and regulation of the employee's manual. I became known to be a person who terrorized the employees and a dictator who is self-serving. In fact, pag naamoy na nila yung amoy ko, kasi pabango ko Fahrenheit, pag naamoy nila yun sa hallway, natatakot na yung mga tao. Until one day, I remember our HR assistant sent out a memo and called all those employees who were late daily for straight one month. The manual states that they are due for counseling by the HR manager. I can sense their fear as they approach the door of my office. It's like entering a shark tank for them. I'm sure they were thinking, oh no, oh no, no, no. This would be my last day. I need to update and print my new resumes. Makapag-apply na sa iba. Or at least, I will be suspended for my work. The first I ask them is, you know, as Filipinos, we don't greet, Oy, kamusta na? Paano tayo bumate? Uy, kumain ka na? The first thing that I ask them is, kumain ka na? Have you already eaten? Or gusto mo ba ng coffee or soda? My second question is, how can I help you? And usually, it came to them as a surprise. I thought, papagalitan ako dito. Bakit tinatanong ako, paano siya makakatulong sa akin? I told them, let's come up with an agreement. 
And together, let's commit in realizing that goal. If you fail, I fail. Bakit? I take part of the blame if ever you fail. If ever you fail, let's do it again until we reach our objectives. And I will always hear, sir, are you sure I will not lose my job? Sabi ko hindi. I won't be punished for anything? Well, of course, sabi ko may mga consequences na hindi ko naman pwedeng i-override because nakastate yan sa manual. But for now, you are under grace for I care for you. My goal is to correct you in love and not eliminate you in hatred. Kasi bakit? Sa HR, mas mahal mag-hire kaysa mag-maintain ng tao. That's the truth. But I'm not looking in that perspective. I'm looking into a perspective na I want to correct the person in love than eliminate the person in hatred. You see, church, as a church, we, we, we correct other believers, especially unbelievers. Sana lang, as we correct people, let our motive be the love of Jesus, not our hatred towards other people. Amen? Number three, sabi ni Pablo kay Timothy, we are to protect our flock. At all cost, we are to protect our flock. In verse 3, sabi niya, for the time is coming. No? For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine. Sabi niya, Tim, pagdating ng panahon, sigurado, a lot of people will not tolerate sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, kung ano yung gusto lang madinig, they will, uh, kumbaga, will multiply teachers for themselves. Sila mismo ang pipili na gusto nilang magturo sa kanila because they are, have an itch to hear. Nangangati ang kanilang mga tenga para madinig ang gusto nilang madinig. Ayoko sa church na yan kasi nagtuturo yan ng Genesis to Revelation. Kasi, you know, when I read the Bible, Proverbs lang ako. Para, you know, masaya. Tsaka ngayon, uso New Testament lang. So, eh, pumunta ka nga sa hotel, di ba? New Testament Bible lang makikita mo. Hindi nyo na kailangan basahin yung Old Testament. We need to understand. The Bible says, time will come, people will not endure sound teaching. They will be lovers of themselves. That's why people flock yung mga gatherings na charismatic. Right? You will see people na nakakulay violet na 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 suit. May malaking bulaklak dito. Pagdadaling kayo ng etlog at saka umbrella. At sasabihin, sinong puge? Kayo po, pastor. <laughs> there are times, these are the times we live in, actually. There is this pastor who claimed to be the son of God who has a ministry here. And his ministry is bigger than our ministry. Imagine that. Why? Because people love to hear what they want to hear. The danger of a world without a center. They choose what is their perspective of right or wrong. Good thing about a map. Buti pa ang mapa. Merong tinatawag na true north. A basis for direction. You see, now all sectors of people claim to be the true north. Sila lang ang masasagip, sila lang ang tama. Pag di ka sumapi sa kanila, hindi ka masasagip. Paul gave a stern charge to Timothy in declaring the truth because even professing Christian people would increase in appet its appetite for the error rather than for the truth. Even Christians. Only sturdy believers can put up with such unstable fellow believers. So Christians will be deceived, but sturdy believers will push through. Eh, paano po ba ako magiging sturdy believers, Pastor? Ay, di ba? Halos isang taon na tayo nag-uusap. Lagi natin sinasabi, una, read the word daily. Make sure you read the word because the word will encourage you. The word will rebuke you. The word will make you grow spiritually. 
Pangalawa, of course, it is a dialogue. After reading the word, you, 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 you got the message, talk to God in prayer. Another thing is fellowship. Take four. What do we mean by take four? We have this hashtag, take four. It means take four. There are four to five Sundays in a month. Sabi mo sa katipi mo, wag kang absent. Di ba? Bakit? Bakit importante ang fellowship? Because your, your, your fellow Christians is also responsible for your growth. Amen? You see, Paul foresaw future times that would even less favorable spiritually than his own. The future difficulties would build upon the foundation of present opposition to the gospel. You see, we need to ready our kids. For I tell you, their generations will be tougher. Send them to our Sinag Kids Ministry. Bring your teens to our C Club Youth Ministry. Aren't you glad we have this ministry provided by God to us in just a matter of six months? Imagine we had this board meeting. We are talking about getting a room, paying and renting a room for kids without kids. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, right? So we are meeting, talking about in a meeting, how much is the rent for, for the kids' room? And we need to rent it right away. But looking at in, a, in, a, in our numbers, wala tayong bata. Well, ganun talaga pag nanalangin ka. There were two kids na nanalangin sa, sa probinsya nila, hindi pa umuulan for six months. So nasisira yung kanilang mga tanim. So what they did, itong dalawang bata na to nanalangin. Sabi nila, Lord, Christian kami. Paulanin mo naman para makapagtanim kami. So ang ginawa ng bata, isang bata, tumakbo. Sabi niya isang bata, sa pupunta yun, nananalangin pa kami. Pagbalik, may dalang timba. Anuhin mo yan? Eh, nanalangin tayo ng ulan. Eh, di ba, sasalok na ako. Ganun dapat. Kaya noon, nagbimiting kami, naalala ko. Gumawa na ako ng letter for, for us to get a room, pero wala pang bata. Pero ngayon, problema namin, nagkulang na yung binili natin na table para sa bata. Because God will provide kids. All you need to do is obey. Amen? You see, you need to bring your teens to our Siklav Youth Ministry. Attend as one united family in our upcoming summer camp and be refreshed. Since I already knew that the people would turn their own ways, siyempre, it makes sense, using your own wisdom and a wisdom coming from God, I'm doing everything to at least lead my family to Christ with the help of my better half. Alam nyo, I used to drive a 22-year-old van, which I junked last year dahil matanda na. Ang tawag namin sa kanya, grandma. So pinagpahinga na namin. I live in a simple home. I don't wear fancy jewelries. I don't collect expensive shoes. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I, and I only own an 18-year-old motorcycle. Yun na yung most prized possession ko. Na nabili ko pa ng mura. Alam niyo kung bakit? Kasi mahal. Nakita ko sa Facebook market. Tapos tinawagan ko, hindi ko kaya to, mahal. Tapos nagkakwentuhan kami ng may-ari. Sabi niya, alam mo, Christian ako, dito ako nagsisimba sa ano, Simi Valley. Sabi niya, saan ka nagtatrabaho? Alam mo, when you ask me when, where, where I work, I always tell the people na I work in a uh, non-profit organization. Kasi I don't want people to be intimidated kasi gusto kong mag-connect sa world. Sometimes when you say right away that you're a pastor, people don't want to talk to you. Right? That's true. In fact, I attended a, a high school reunion. Yung kaklase ko, ayaw ako kausapin eh kasi maninigarilyo sila sa balcony. <laughs> sabi ko, unfair naman. So sabi, sabi niya, so particularly, what non-profit organization. Well, I work for a, a, a faith-based organization. Okay, so hindi pa rin specified, di ba? I said, I want to use the pastor card. Pero sabi niya, so what do you do particularly in that faith-based organization? Is that the church? 
Sabi ko, isa na to, ha, Lord. <laughs> Wala na akong magagawa dito. Sabi ko, yes, I am a pastor. Oh. Sabi niya, good. I'll give it to you half the price. Hindi <laughs> na akong gumamit ng ano, ha, pastor card. Ha. Parang pulis, eh, no? Libre, badge, parang ganun. You see, most probably, 90% of the people here in Wiley Chapel are richer than me. It's not that I'm less blessed or not capable of earning. It's because I know that I need to prioritize. And that is my calling to God. Instead of buying expensive gadgets, I will send my kids to Shepherd Comp, which costs $300 to $500. By the way, our comp fee this coming July 1, 2, 3 are only $150. Imagine for three days, $150 lang babayarin mo. Commercial muna. Instead of buying signature clothes, I will send money to people who are in ministry of pastoring a poor local church in the Philippines. Instead of buying accessories for my car, which I don't have, I will send money to youth groups who organize camps for unbelievers. Instead of buying expensive concert or theme park tickets or NBA tickets, I will open our house for free dinner to those people who want to be led to Christ. Don't get me wrong, it's okay to, do, to have those things. But please remember Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom and the righteousness of God. And all these things will be added unto you. You see, how come, how, how, how come we have money for other things, but we don't invest in our spiritual growth? By the way, the Lord honored me as I seek Him first. The outcome is that I, took, I got that bike for like 50%. God provides for me free gadgets, free smartwatch, free business suit, free car, free NBA and team tickets. There's a lot of free things na hindi ko kailangan bilhin because it just happened to land in front of my door. And others too many to mention. What I'm saying is, since we know that in the coming days, we will be deceived. Kasi hindi na una, sinasabi na ng, ng Biblia. Why not do something to lead people to sound teaching and in relationship with Christ? Amen? Why not use your resources for God? We poured out money on kids and youth ministry this year and look how they grew. Amen? We are investing on them because the coming days will be deceiving. We want to point people to Jesus as many as we can. Ang di now, sinasabi ni Pablo, Hey, Pastor Tim, sa, sa time ko, chaotic. Sa time mo, mas chaotic. But alam mo ba, sa 2022 and so on, it will be more chaotic. Sinabi na sa Bible eh. So why we don't invest in our kids? Amen? You see, Paul described three features that would develop as evidence of a restless craving for novelty. First, listeners would no longer put up with sound doctrine. They would find the content and demands of the gospel unpalatable to them. How many attendees who listened to teachings and eventually left the church because they thought they are being singled out by the preacher? We will not spend one week of studying the sermon and not sleep on a Saturday night, I tell you, sabi nga ni Pastor Bert, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's painful, no? The Word of God is for all of us. We will not do this to make your life miserable. Alam niyo, good news actually, pag nasaktan ka sa, sa sermon ng Panginoon, it means it is effective. Amen? It means hindi ka pa kalos heart. Listen to the message do not shoot the messenger. Second, they would amass teachers to suit their own desires. They would pack the pulpits of their churches with preachers who would tell them the only what they desired to hear. Gusto ko yung nagpapa-encourage sa akin. Good vibes lang ba? Yung bang magsasabi sa akin na yayaman ako? Yung bang magsasabing gagaling ako? Yung bang magsasabi sa akin na pastor na Everything will be alright. 
that is not true. It doesn't mean you are attending a small church, you are less blessed. But it doesn't mean also you are attending a bigger church, you are more sanctified. Choose the people you listen to. Avoid bandwagon effect. Kung saan uso, doon tayo. And never ever listen to preachers because their teaching suits your own desires. The more kang nasasaktan, the more mo siyang puntahan. Dahil ibig sabihin, kinakausap ka ng Panginoon. Third, they would do this because they wanted only to satisfy the itching or in their ears. This description refers to the people who crave spicy bits of information due to mere curiosity. Kasi curious lang sila. Such speakers, to, uh, uh, speakers toy with the minds of the hearers but leave the intellect uninformed, the conscience unchallenged. No? Ang nangyayari, nakiliti mo yung tenga ng listeners mo, pero uuwi sila uninformed at uuwi sila unchallenged. Di ba masarap pag umuwi kayo after this? Every time pupunta kayo dito sa simbahan na to, bago ka matulog mamayang gabi, sasabi mo na naman sa Panginoon, Lord, challenge mo na naman ako kanina sa sermon na ina. Lord, ang dami ko na namang information na nakuha. At saka di ba, maganda pag uuwi ka, naintindihan mo yung sermon, hindi yung pag uwi mo. Ano ba bang sinabi? Pero maganda naman pakinggan, English kasi. You see, you need to understand, sabi dito in verse 4, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into meats. No? Paul outlined in this verse two results of spiritual wandering. First, the listeners will turn away from hearing the truth of the gospel. Ahaluan pa nila yan ng mga yoga-yoga, yung mga, ano yun, uh, uh, law of attraction. And second, they would turn aside to me. They look for someone to suit the each rather than to satisfy the thirst. Minsan, ang tao nakalungkot, mas gusto makinig sa kwentong barbero kaysa sa salita ng Diyos. Amen? Minsan, nakalungkot, madaming mga ngaral na nagkwento na nagkwento pero walang kwenta dahil lumayo sa salita ng Diyos. Amen? And number four, we are pur- purposely called. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, you are purposely called. Verse five, as for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. We must remain cool-headed in the face of difficulties. We must be ready to endure hardship as the pressure mounted. In contrast to those listeners who have itching ears, we are to respond with spiritual intelligence. We call to live continually in a state of alertness as we meet heretical teaching. The alertness we practice, we were to practice, was to not merely a calmness of spirit, but an ability to be watchful and cautious with reference to the false teaching around us. Sa totoo lang, there are five-fold ministries. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Lima po yan. But, maaaring hindi mo makuha yung apat, pero sigurado, sa isa, kuha nating lahat yun. Ano yun? We are all an evangelist. Because we have a story to tell. Amen? Pag sumasa kayo ako dati ng taxi, I don't share like, pag di niyo po tinanggap si Kristo, pupunta po kayo ng hell. So bago po ako bumaba dito, mag-pray na tayo. I don't do that. Bakit? Kasi kukontrahin niya ako eh. Kasi that's my opinion. But, when I talk about my life, when I talked about how I lived before, and talk about how God changed my heart, changed my life, changed my attitude, hindi niya ako kontrahin nun. Buhay ko yun eh. Right? And then, mabibless siya. And then, bago mo ba, i-tune in niyo po sa 702 DCAS. Maghapon po, ma- naku, mabibless po ang puso niyo. Hindi ko na siya ipagpipray, baka mabangga pa kami. Pero, pagpipray ko siya pag- pagdating ko sa bahay. You need to understand 
that uh, witnessing is not simply a responsibility for ordained leaders, but for all believers. Amen? Kaya tayo, wag tayong maging kristyano sa nguso, kundi maging kristyano sa puso. A young preacher once complained to Charles Spurgeon, the famous British preacher of the 1800s that he did not have as a big uh, uh, church as he deserved. Sabi ni Charles Spurgeon, eh, ilan ba, membro mo, how many do you preach to? Sabi niya, oh, about 100 po. Solemnly, Spurgeon said, that will be enough to give account for the day of judgment. We do not measure the fulfillment of a ministry only on the basis of statistics or on what people see. We realize that faithfulness is important and that God sees the heart. This was why, this was why we have to be sober in all things and carry on his ministry with seriousness of purpose. You see, we are not only a preacher, we are also a soldier who would have to endure affliction like Paul. We have seen Paul go through sufferings on more than one occasion. Fifth, sabi ni Paul, as we end, no? we are to finish the race. Sabi niya in verse 6, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure has come. Para na akong nauupos. Para na akong isinasalin na offering kay Lord at ako'y paalis na. Alam niyo, Paul was about to die. Alam niyo yun. The apostle's strong charge is the previous verse, in, in our previous verses takes an added weight with, with this reminder. Paul viewed his death now as a certain. He was already being poured out like a drink offering. Alam ni Paul na sa Roman jail na yon, sigurado, last day niya na. Wala na tong release. The time had come for his, disciple, for his departure. Pero ano sinabi ni Paul? Ang ganda. Ito yung laging kinukot ng mga Christiane. For I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Di ba? Ah, di ba ang sarap banggitin nun? Pero yun, nagsisimula if you go back to basics. You cannot fight the good fight. You cannot finish the race. And you cannot keep the faith if you don't read your word daily, if you don't pray to God daily, if you don't take four. Because that is where you will grow. Bakit ba ang kulit mo, Pastor? Bakit? Paulit-ulit mo sinasabi, san taon na yan, ha? Ikaw naman palit ng preaching. Kasi kailangan natin bumalik sa basics. You cannot understand college kung hindi ka nag-elementary at high school. Subukan mo. Huwag kang mag-aral ng buong buhay mo. Mag-first year college ka kagad sa UP. Pag di ka umiyak, kumain ng fishbowl doon sa UP ikot. Di ba? Kasi wala kang alam. You need to understand. Hindi para maliitin ka. Kundi para turuan ka. Right? Sometimes pride gets in the way. Oh, I don't have to read the Bible. Alam ko na story dyan eh. Sige nga. You see, the Bible gives us many messages. Minsan, yung preaching ngayon, iba ang preaching, same verse, iba yung message next time. We cannot under, underestimate the Word of God. And number six, as we end, we are to receive the award. Sabi dito, henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Alam nyo, dito, the phrase righteousness may refer to the crown, either as a reward for righteous behavior, or as a gift consisting of a righteous awarded by the judge when he returns. But remember, we were all saved by grace so no one can boast. Not of our own righteousness. Becoming righteous is the only byproduct of God's grace. 
Paul was describing a reward given by God in recognition of an upright life. In fact, being saved is the greatest reward we can get. But, but if you're a believer, sabi naman ng Biblia, gusto mo ng magandang gandang bahay, mag-invest ka na dito. Right? God is faithful to believers. He will not ignore their works. He will justly evaluate all of them. Ano ang takeaway natin sa umaga? Oh, Pinoy, may hiling mag-take out yan. Jesus Christ is the righteous judge. Amen? Who always judges correctly. You see, false judges in Rome were not righteous. Ang goal noon, patayin siya out of hatred. How many times Paul had been tried in one court after another, yet now he faced his last judge, his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When you are ready to face the Lord, you need not fear the judgment of man. You see, the crown of righteousness is God's reward for a faithful and righteous life. And our incentive for faithfulness and holiness is the promise of the Lord's appearing. Because Paul loved his appearing and looked for it. He lived it righteously and served faithfully. We are not called to be apostles, yet we can win the same crown that Paul won. If we love Christ appearing, live in obedience to his will and do the work he has called us to do. And we will be crowned someday. Let us all stand and bow our heads. Close our eyes. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, thank you for being our judge. Thank you for teaching us not to judge other people, Lord God, based on their, the color of their skin, their gender preferences, their attitudes, their behaviors. Thank you for teaching us to, to love our God, not because we want the crown. It's the byproduct of our obedience. We want to share the gospel. We want to fulfill our ministry, Lord, because we love you and we want to please you alone. We become an audience of one, and that is to please you. Here are your people, Lord God. If anyone here who wish to accept Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior and want to fulfill his or her ministry in their lives, let's ask for forgiveness, repent of our sins, and accept Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior. Lord, you know my sins. You know what I said, what I thought of, what I did. You actually saw it, Lord, and you are not pleased. This morning, I repent to you, Lord God. On this altar, I lay down all my sins to you. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Make use of me, Lord God. Allow me to fulfill my ministry. Use me as your mouthpiece. Use me. Use my life to be a blessing to others. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. May we please remain standing and let us uh, go to our uh, communion service. Pastor Bert. It's our first worship Sunday of January, it's our Communion Sunday. Uh, please raise your hands if you don't have the elements with you. Glad change slide, please. Slide.
said to the disciples, our Lord Jesus Christ said, Here's one that I received from the Lord, and I gave it to you. On that night, before he was betrayed, as I said, he took the bread, and after he gave thanks, and salamat siya, he broke the bread. Sabi niya, take this bread and eat it. And, and eating this bread, remember, this is my body that was broken because of you. So take this bread, he said, and do this in remembrance of me. The time to let my slide please the same way he took he also took the cup after supper and said this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you let's all partake from the cup heavenly father thank you lord god for the opportunity to commemorate lord god your sacrifices your love Thank you for the Christmas. Thank you for Easter. Long, Lord, we, we, we long, Lord God, for you to be with you someday, forever and ever. Lord, thank you for your forgiveness this day. For you freed a person's heart, Lord God. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Let's give the best clap offering for this morning to God.
Isang malaking sunog sa Maynila. Uh, part tayo nun. Yung nakaraang bagyo sa, sa Visayas, part tayo nun. Kung saan man may sakuna sa buong mundo, part tayo nun. Dahil meron tayo Nazarene Compassion Ministry at yung inyong tithes and offering pumupunta doon. Bukod sa ating uh, ating uh, operations dito, no, may mga kagaya niya na local church na uh, initiated, uh, Lafil Nas yung gumawa nito para sa mga kababayan natin na kapataan doon sa Mantagda Mizal. Part din tayo nun. So, lahat ng binibigay natin sa Panginoon, bumabalik na gawain ng Panginoon. Everybody, let's give the Lord a big clap of offerings for the name. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, happy birthday to our January celebrants to We Hannah Joy, Martin, Kyan, Jan, Jade, Shelton, Dean, Corazon, Fe, Leslie, and Amy. Happy birthday to you. Uh, if you have a birthday this month, please let us know so that we can greet you every week. Uh, and happy anniversary to Ronald and Eden De La Cruz. Sila ata magpapalitsyon. And um, uh, if you would like to give online, please visit tithe.ly, search LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene, and you can give through that way. We are starting our walk through the Bible for 52 nights on January 3rd all the way up to February 24th at every 7 p.m. It's going to be played um, live on Facebook and YouTube. Okay, for those of us who are um, so young in the generation that we, we just don't know how to work YouTube, uh, if you would like to follow along with me, we have a little tour. So if you go to Google, type in YouTube.com youtube.com it's struggling and then type in on the search on la filipino nazarene okay and then you'll see that's our bunch of videos that's ours and then that's our profile that's our page and then that's the subscribe button. please click the subscribe button sign in you can't subscribe without signing in and then put in your information and then once you're out of that go back and then we have our playlist, which will be available for the 52 nights. Um, and uh, you can click on the uploads to check on previous uh, sermons and obviously the, um, the corresponding um, video for that night. And so uh, if you are somebody who won't be able to listen in at 7 p.m., we will have a YouTube playlist of all 52 videos for you to watch every day we really encourage each and every one of you to participate in this because like what pastor jeff has said we all need to take the time to nourish ourselves and to get to know who christ is it's it's a friendship it's a relationship it's not just something you visit and you check in and then uh, and then you'll know it's something that you have to do every single day and cultivate that kind of relationship and so that's how you subscribe to La Finless. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Ah, yes, you have to comment too so that we know that you have watched. Um, 
text slide, please. There you go. Uh, every Wednesday we have our upper Zoom. Uh, that's uh, on 8 p.m. And um, everybody is welcome to come together. And there's a little devotional. And uh, we just come together and pray for one another. Uh, join our Alab Institute Club Bible study at 7 p.m. That is every Thursday starting this week. We are going through the book of Matthew. And um, it's, it's such a fun um, a time where we laugh, we check in, and we get to know each other one um, deeper as we get to know Jesus deeper. So join us uh, for our <laughs> Friday live group on Zoom. That's on 8 p.m. That is also available for each and every one of you um, from youth to very old. <laughs> And then we have our basketball ministry every Saturday at Second Floor Gym from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And prayer and fasting for our um, beginning of the year will start on January 10th to 14th. And there will be a devotional on Zoom every night. So we invite you to join that too. Ah, and then our family day is on January 16th. This will be a volleyball competition so if you're somebody who is athletic and you know that this is your game, we invite you to come. Maybe there's a huge prize. We don't know. You just have to come and make it. Uh, and save the date for La Vilnas Camp. Um, that's going to be on July 1, 2, 3. Um, please save your spot. Um, see Sister Gurley. That, that's her lovely picture right there, if you can see. See them? They're, they're modeling the beds. That's, that's what you're going to be sleeping on. Um, it's $150, so do see Sister Gurley for that. And um, welcome to La Filnaz. Um, we in this church um, have a heart that our mission is to um, seek people who are of Filipino descent and to worship God in ways that who we are as Filipinos. And so welcome to our church. If you are um, uh, if you are a first time or second time attending, can you please raise your hand so we can welcome you? Oh, Pastor Jeff, welcome. Yay. Um, make sure uh, to visit, uh, visit, uh, see Pastor Rave later. You'll get a little gift from us. Um, but we welcome you and we hope that you um, uh, have fun with us at the Courtyard Fellowship where there is food. So if I can call him Pastor Bert. Thank you, Sister Clint. Let's stand up. Amen. It's good to hear the word of God on the first day of the year. Amen. Can you imagine? It's already 2021. 20, oh, no, no. 20, 20, 22. <laughs> oh, praise God. Ano ko lang kayo kung talagang gising kayo. Praise God. Amen. Uh, remember na yung can reach satin or the message that uh, brought to us by our dear pastor is that we must remain uh, to the sound doctrine. Palagi tayong makinig ng salita ng Panginoon upang tayo ay on the last day, sabi nga, there are many false teachers who are arising. No? Kaya maganda po na you came over here in this place and we welcome you. You are a part of the family. As I, uh, I'm always saying that uh, if you don't have a family, once you come here in downtown L.A., consider this church. A church so little and yet it has a big heart. Amen. Kayo po ay hindi lang kapamilya. Ano pa yung isa? Kapuso. Amen. Alam nila, kapuso. <laughs> Praise God. Let's raise our hands. Amen. And receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you. And be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So go in peace and share the word that you have heard this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.
Earth Yards. <laughs>